What is going on guys? This is going to be today's recap of all the big options trades and um, I'm, I'm going to go over not only the big trades but uh, we're going to look at some charts with them to see which ones are worth following. So get out your pen and paper and let's go over some notes from today. All right, let's start with Amazon. Obviously after the split there was going to be huge options buying. That's why they did it. Um, we got to September there was some huge, huge buying, 3,000 of these at the 120 strike. And so if we pull up TOS and we zoom in on Amazon, what we can see with Amazon is the MACD is really, really strong. But this thing is putting in a horrendous candle here. Look at this candle. It got up to 130 and it sold all the way off. Um, let's go look at the weekly. You can see here the weekly strengthening, but it's getting rejected still at that 10 EMA. And so Amazon still doesn't look good, but there was a huge, huge buy today in these um, 120s. And you can see here, there was another one at the 135 strike way out in September. So keep your eye on that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do all the calls first, and then I'm gonna do the puts after just to make it easier. So on the NASDAQ, okay, if we go out to March, there's so many expirations. Okay, if we go out to March, of 2023, there was a huge buy of 315 calls, okay? And you can see it here, really weird, right? There's nothing out here in any of these. They picked up a ton of these, okay? And they paid a lot of money. This is almost a $10 million trade. So somebody's looking for a big move up in the NASDAQ. Again, this could be a hedge, it could be whatever. But if we go back to the charts of the Qs, this is on a weekly look. Again, look, still struggling to get over the 10. It's rejected right at it. Um, if we go to a daily look, uh, again, rejected. This is at the 20 SMA, and you can see here the MACD getting weaker, um, but it's flagging. I mean, for now, this is a bull flag and until it breaks down, but it's just kind of no man's land, not really a chart you wanna buy. Uh, next up, we have ARC. Kathy Wood, everyone's favorite. So with ARC, they bought a lot of December 60 calls. Okay, look, this is $43, all right? And you come down here and look at this. Huge, huge, huge volume on the 60s. I mean, this needs 40% to be in the money. I mean, this is, this is way out there, but again, these are things where if ARC squeezes up 10%, these are gonna double and they're gonna make a lot of money in these and probably close them out. But let's look at a chart of ARC. Let's see where this is going. And with ARC, what you can see here is on the daily, the MACD's been strong. It's starting to weaken, but it still hasn't really crossed many critical levels. Let's see on the weekly. On the weekly, it's still well below the 10, but look at this, the MACD flip positive. So, I mean, not to get too excited, it did this back in November as well, and then the next week it went lower, but keep your eye on this. ARC looks like it may want to run soon. Um, let's see what's next. So, JP Morgan is a name I highlighted the last two weeks as having a nice chart. It's, it's weak today, but JP Morgan, there was huge buying in the November 130s, right here, 1,100 of them. Okay, and I, I've mentioned this before, this is a chart where it looks good on the weekly. What you can see here on the weekly, it broke this long downtrend, look at this, the MACD just flipped positive on the weekly for the first time in seven or eight months. This is a good looking chart, still struggling with some critical levels, but this is a really nice chart here. This is one you may wanna sell puts lower, maybe down here at this level, 126-ish, uh, try to get long the stock. I, I wouldn't run out and buy it right here, but like I said, sell puts lower. Um, this is a good looking chart. Next up, we have Robinhood, which Robinhood reported a pretty good quarter last week. I mean, they announced a massive buyback. This is a $6 billion company. They announced a $2 billion buyback. Um, again, Warren Buffett has a huge stake in this. Now, this is an interesting trade because what they did was they bought a call spread. So they bought the 350s and they sold the 400s expiring July 15th. So about a month from now, they are looking for a pretty substantial move, about 30% to go in the money. So 
Um, this is a trade where, look, you buy these for $8.80 and you sell these for $1.79. You're putting on the whole trade for seven bucks and basically over $3.57, you're, you're in the money. So um, this, is, this is a trade, basically they need 15% for this trade at a worst case scenario. But um, this is a good trade if you think this is going to come back. Now, Restoration Hardware was a $700 stock. All right, this was, you can see this stock here on the weekly. Um, look at this, the MACD's up for the third straight week. It's running into the 10 now. It would be big if it could cross it. But this was $740 last August. It's down at 311 and like I said, Buffett has a huge stake in this. And uh, I'd keep my eye on it. You know, this is, um, this is a very strong chart here in this market. Uh, next up, we have Next Era Energy. Now, Next Era Energy is uh, FPL here in Florida. It's uh, the power. It's you know, it's a utility company. But the thing with with them is they were the largest uh, clean energy utility. And there's been a lot of insider buys in this name the last few months after the crash. There's been a lot of them. And so here, there was a huge number of September calls bought today. Okay, at 72 and at 80. And this is a name, this is a defensive name, okay? And if we're running into like a bumpy market, this is a very defensive name. And because it's a clean energy name, it gets all that ESG, ETF inclusion, and all that stuff that other utilities do not get. So let's pull up the knee chart. And what you can see here, again, on the weekly, this is a really nice chart. MACD flipped green. Uh, it's taken back multiple critical levels. It's getting stuck at the 20 as we speak, but this is a very nice chart, again, on a weekly basis. Next, we have PayPal. And here you go, PayPal. There was huge buying in the June 93 calls. That's next week. All right, so let's go up here. Let's take a look what we've got here. And you can see it right here. 1,700 of them bought, okay? Now, the stock's at 87, so this needs a pretty substantial move in a week. So, you know, if you're one of those who believes someone always knows, it's very possible. You know, I would sell puts lower than this, and I would try to get in if you could, uh, if you wanted to play PayPal. I'm not a fan of this stock, but it's been killed. Let's pull up the chart. Uh, let's see what the chart's saying here on PayPal. So on PayPal, look at this, the MACD. Wow, this is a pretty strong MACD here. It's been positive for a while. The stock's gone nowhere, but it's strengthening. And the stock looks poised to reclaim the 10 finally. So you know what? This might be a stock. Again, you want to sell puts lower. Never pay full price when you're entering a position. Uh, next, we have SE. And this is one a lot of you ask me about. I'm not really a big fan of this name, but here you can see a huge buy on the 83s. Kind of out of place here. Uh, two weeks out. And so, again, if you want to play it, sell puts lower, but keep your eye on this. Uh, this is a name that was also well over 300. You know, it's been crushed. And uh, let's pull up its chart here. So, with SE, look at this. The MACD is, it's been strong for four straight weeks, but like every other name, it's just running into the 10 and getting rejected. So, keep that in mind when you're paying attention to it. Uh, next is Domino's. Now, Domino's has been one of the strongest names for years. You know, this name's actually outperformed Google and Amazon and many other names for many, many years. It's crazy to even think that, but it's really true. You can Google it. There's like a couple articles on it. Um, now, Domino's, there was a huge buy in September right here at 400. Now, look at this. Nobody's buying anything out here, all right? And then all of a sudden, you got this huge block of 700 at 400. This was, I think this was over 500 bucks. I, I don't know if Bill Ackman still has his stake. Uh, this is a good company. And as you can see here, look at this, right? They're buying the calls right as the MACD flips. So again, this is why this stuff is so critical. And I tell all of you, you gotta pay attention to the technicals, right? Like there was a fund somewhere out there that said, okay, I'm gonna wait until the technicals align on dominoes. And when they do, I'm going to get long uh, calls. And so they waited until the MACD flipped and then boom, today, they bought their calls and look at this thing. It's it's a beauty. It's over the 10. Now it's targeting the 21 and we're looking higher up. Next up, we have Snapchat. Now Snapchat, these calls were bought for this week. Now 
This is a name that's been killed, okay? And you can see these 1550 calls. They bought over 20,000 of them for 40 cents. Uh, this is a name, you know, obviously they, they recently gave that bad guidance. And what you're looking at here, this is a pretty terrible MACD on the weekly, but let's look at the daily because this is a, a trade that ends in four days. And you can see here, the MACD has been strengthening even from that crash. So this might be one that works this week, okay? If you want to pay attention to it, watch the Snapchat 1550s for Friday. Uh, I would never recommend gambling on such a short time frame like that. But if you want to sell puts lower, maybe at 14, maybe at 13 for the week, maybe you can pick up some free money if some, someone squeezes it higher. Now, let's look at Okta. So Okta, this is a cybersecurity name that had a really good report last week, and it's been crushed, okay? It's $95 right now. Now, this trade's interesting because they went a month out, okay, to July, and look at these calls they bought at $160, 2,400 of these. Look at this. Now, they paid pennies for these, right? 20 cents. So again, if Okta squeezes up to like 120 bucks, these might double and they'll make some money. But Okta was actually, it was at $160 recently, like a month ago, actually. So if we look at the weekly on Okta, you can see here, the MACD is still negative, but it's strengthening. But Okta was 160 in March. So... You know, down here, this is this is an interesting trade because uh, it, it, not so much dollar-wise, but they're going really far out the money, and they're looking for a big, big, big gamma squeeze. Uh, next up, we have Carvana. Now, Carvana, everybody knows all their recent troubles, but they've had a lot of insider buys, believe it or not. Like, I mean, again, this isn't a company I like. I think it's a terrible company, actually. But look at these August in the money. They, they went to the lowest strike in August, $15, and they bought a ton of these in the money calls. Now, uh, you know, you can see here what they paid. And uh, Okta, I mean, Carvana, this was like a $300 stock, okay? And so if this rips up to like, say, 40 by August, these are going to go up 100%. They're going to go up substantially. So watch these maybe you want to sell puts lower on this thing not a name i like i think it's a very dangerous name this very well could be a hedge right somebody could be heavily short carvana and they could be long these as a hedge but just uh keep that in mind all right next up i want to show you kimberly clark now this is a defensive name a staple uh a pretty important name so if you go out to th these aren't names that that um they move a lot Right, and they, they don't really buy options on these names very, very often. So you can see here, 500 of these, 135 calls on Kimberly Clark for next summer. Uh, th th this is a, like I said, a defensive name. They make toilet paper. Um, this was the one Jim Cramer was famously screaming about. You know, we got to raise basis points, 100 points at once to stop Kimberly Clark from raising toilet paper prices. But um, this is an interesting trade because this isn't a name that sees options activity like that. Next we have X, which is US Steel. And this is a name, again, that's like a barometer of our economy, right? Like how is steel doing? That's a big barometer of our economy. So if we look at X, um, I think it was here. Uh, no, sorry, I think it was right here, July. You can see it right here. $24 calls, over 5,000 of them. So this is a trade that says the economy is not as bad as it's looking. Uh, so this is a pretty uh, nice one. If this ends up being $30, these are going to go up 100%. So keep your eye on that. X was $30. Now, the next two I'm going to show you, UPS and FedEx, these are both on the same strike. So UPS, they bought a ton of July 185 calls, okay, for July 1st. Uh, I don't really follow these names, really. So UPS, you can see here, ton of July 1st, 185 calls. And FedEx, the same strike, they bought a ton of 225 calls. So let's open this up, and you can see that here. And so if I had to guess one or both of these report earnings before then, and somebody's looking for one of them to have fantastic earnings, and both of them will go up, what's odd is... With higher fuel prices, even with the surcharges, I, I figured these names to be struggling pretty mightily. I mean, Amazon is struggling a lot. So it would really shock me if those names were going well. Let's look at the charts real quick on FedEx. So FedEx on the weekly, 
you can see here, the MACD strengthening, FedEx is getting pretty strong, looks good. Let's look at UPS. UPS, the MACD is still negative, but you know, there's a bullish divergence. It just crossed the 10. So you know what? Maybe these two names do surprise somehow. I mean, there's so much negativity priced into these names. It, it's uh, not hard to see how it can't get much worse. Now, the last name I'm going to show you with calls is Melco. So Melco, look at this. It's up 8% today. It's under six bucks. This is one of the biggest casinos in Macau. And as many of you know, I love the casino stocks. Um, Macau has been closed for so long because of China and their zero COVID policy. It's been every month is just terrible year over year for Macau. Macau is slowly beginning to reopen. And if we look here, they bought a lot of calls on this thing here at $9, okay? <coughs> and so um, this is looking for a big move up near 10 bucks, but if you look at Melco, this is a stock. This is this is not a bad company, okay? This is a company that's just been killed because of COVID, but if we look here at Melco, okay? Oh, sorry for that. I'll clean that up in a second. But if you look um, here, this was a $20 stock last year. So keep your eye on Melco. Uh, that's a name that has a lot of room to run as the COVID ends, all right? Now, let's go look at the puts that were bought today okay and sold there, there's a lot of puts sold and bought but i want to go switch over to puts so if we go to october on amazon all right huge 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 put sales right here okay at 120 okay and this is somebody looking to buy amazon basically for 110 dollars, which is 2200 but now with the split like i said it costs substantially less a lot of people are going to get into that strike um, so look at that. And then let's go to September. They sold a ton at the 100 strike. Look at this 17,000 of them. Now, again, remember each one of these is 100 shares. So somebody sold 17,000 of these looking to get long Amazon at basically $97, uh, under 2000 a share split adjusted. So keep your eye on that. Um, next up we have Philip Morris, which is a cigarette maker. One of the most defensive names in our market, big dividend, uh, great, great stock. Okay. Somebody sold a ton of January right here. You see these 105 puts, they sold 2,500 of them for over eight bucks. So they're looking to get long Philip Morris at 97 with that dividend, probably a solid play. But again, this is something where you don't have to sell these exact ones, right? You can come up here and sell maybe 95 puts for January, but whatever it is, this is a big trade somebody put on looking for a chance to buy Philip Morris a little bit lower. Now, Texas Instruments is the next one. This is a chart I like. I mean, this is a company I like, okay? You can see today it's weak in this tape, but look at this, June of next year, all right? Now, this is kind of a weird trade because this is one of the best semiconductors in our market. So this kind of says a lot about the sentiment right now. And so if you look at these, they bought 500 of these 170 puts for over $20. So they're looking for a big move down in Texas Instruments. Let's look at this chart because again, this is one of the leaders in the semi space. And if you look at the weekly, all right, it's still below the 10 right here, still below the 10. And you can see it's weakening from last week to this week, it's weakening and the RSI is pointing down. I mean, this is not a good looking chart. So this is one where, you know, if you wanna add some shorts to look at, I hate saying it because, you know, I, I love this company. This is a great company. But if you want to add some puts, this looks like a name where uh, there's some big institutional money flying into puts. So keep your eye on it. Uh, next, we have JD. And so JD, obviously, one of the biggest retailers in China, a lot like Baba. It's been killed. Uh, they bought a lot of these September 55 puts. Let's go over here. September Let's expand the strikes a little bit. Let's see right here. Look at this, 5,000 of these. Okay, so JD, another name, uh, really can't get off the map for the last year. And if we look at the chart here, look at this. It's finally over some big levels and the MACD is positive. This, this really isn't where I would personally short it. So this is where you have to kind of uh, give credence to the institutional money, right? And just say, okay, someone knows something that I don't because this is a nice looking chart. And so I, I personally could not short JD right here. I mean, look at this, it's over three critical levels. 
but alas, somebody's doing it, and so you gotta pay attention, okay? So if you're long, maybe you wanna buy some hedges and protect. I, I don't know, I, I'm not involved with that name at all. Now we have Roku, and so Roku is obviously a Kathy Wood favorite, and it's been shot. I, I mean, Roku, there's nothing good to say about it. Uh, they bought a thousand of these 95 puts, okay? They're in the money. And so they're looking to push Roku substantially lower. And, you know, it feels to me, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but it just feels to me like somebody is short Kathy Wood and like pressing everything she does, okay? If we look at Roku, the MACD has been strong now for two months and the stock's gone nowhere. It's like every pop is sold. Like, look at this, look at this uh, RSI. It's still like sub 30. It can't, it, it can't do anything. And it's, it, it's just crazy to me. But if you're long the stock, just be careful. It seems uh, like this is a, a name that's heavily, heavily shorted. But as I showed you earlier, somebody's buying a ton of ARC calls. And I'm pretty sure Roku is the biggest position in ARC right now. Uh, next up we have CrowdStrike. So CrowdStrike, I thought it had a pretty decent ER. Wasn't the best, wasn't the worst, but, um, you know, it, it's just an expensive stock, but it's a great company. You're never going to get great companies for cheap. Now this caught me off guard because they bought a ton of these December 155 puts for over $20. And this is almost $2 million worth. Okay. Keep in mind, Cybersecurity is one of the few things companies will not cut spending on, even in a recession. Uh, but the stock is expensive. Will it's multiple contract? I don't know. Let's pull up the chart. Let's look at CrowdStrike. And if we look here, again, like most other tech names, rejected. It's not getting over the 10. The MACD is still weak. You know, it's a weak chart. So if you want to be short something, that's a chart to be short. Uh, next I have here Las Vegas Sands. Uh, let me see what they are. July 29th puts. Okay. That's what they're buying. And if you look at this weekly, look at this, it's getting rejected, rejected. The MACD is starting to curl, but it's still a very weak chart. And they're looking at the $29 July puts. And, uh, you know, we, we just don't know how Macau is going to do. I just mentioned the calls on, uh, Melco and Las Vegas Sands is in that same camp. They they sold all their Las Vegas operations and it's strictly a Macau company. So it's uh, really basically re relying on the Chinese uh, government at this point. So keep your eye on this. Uh, Visa, they bought a lot of July 210 puts. Now I've said I like this Visa chart a lot. And I've said that for a while because look, it's basing at the 200 week. So this is a critical level of base at... They're buying the July 210 puts, so they're not looking for anything catastrophic, but they're they're looking for more chop sideways. You can see here the MACD flipped green. The, the name's trying to get a little strength, but it's look at this. It got over the 20 SMA and shot right back down today. We'll we'll have to see what uh, Visa can do going forward, but um, they're they're looking for just a hair lower on it. Now Micron is next and this is a name a lot of you have asked me about and this name is like dirt cheap okay it's like a sub 10 price to earnings they sold a lot of july 57 50 puts which would be below the 200 week let's go see how many of these they sold let's go see micron so with micron july 57 50 here you go 5,500 of them, okay, in one block. Now, I didn't mention these other two because these were not one block. Like, I, I'm looking at huge one block trades. And so, with Micron, they're basically looking to get long the stock under, under the 200 week. And that's fine. I mean, with any stock, the 200 week is where you want to look to get long. So, looking to get long a little below it is fine. I personally would have sold these at 60. But whatever, they, they wanted to be more conservative. Um, you can see here, there was a lot more uh, puts at the $60 strike. I'd have to look through there and see if they were put, uh, bought or sold. But, you know, just what you want to see. Next, we have Bank of America. There was 10,000 of these December 36 puts sold. Look at this. So if we go to December, huge volume. Okay, and these were all sold. One block, 10,000. And they're looking to get long Bank of America under 33. Now, this is one of Warren Buffett's favorite stocks. 
Uh, he sold most of the other banks and he, he's kept a substantial stake here. Let's look at the chart. Back-to-back -back weeks, rejected at the 10, but the MACD's curling up and look at this. Where did they sell them? At 36 and getting three of premium. They're basically looking to get long at the 200 week average, which like I said, is a critical level and they're gonna get low, get long right below it. So that's a good trade. Um, we'll have to see how the banks hold up if we really do enter a recession. And now the final trade is Lockheed Martin, which has been completely on fire for so long, uh, thanks to the war in Ukraine and increased defense spending. But uh, if we go to December, they sold all these puts at 340 for six bucks. The stock's at 443. Um, Lockheed Martin is not an expensive company. It, it, this is a great trade, okay? I mean, I don't know how much margin you have in your account, but this is gonna take some margin. And this is a trade, I mean, this is easy money. I mean, there's no way really with defense spending going up, you're gonna be able to buy Lockheed Martin for like $334. But this is a fantastic put sale. Obviously, there's six months to go on it, but for this fund here, this is going to be a nice chunk of money for almost nothing. Uh, pretty risk-free trade. Even in a recession or whatnot, defense spending is still going to go up. And so I just wanted to get all those out, guys, and uh, I want to say thank you. And I hope you guys have enjoyed these option trades, and I hope you're learning something, and I hope you're taking notes and using this to make you a better trader. Uh, like I said... Use this info in a different way, okay? When you see calls bought, sell puts below it, okay? When you see puts bought, sell call spreads above it. Use, don't chase the big trades, okay? Use them in a different way. Like if somebody thinks X stock is cheap at 20 bucks, great. You try to buy it at 17.50. Don't follow him buying calls at $20. That's all I can tell you. Uh, that's how I use the data. You know, I, I look at the data and I keep an open mind because like I said, many could be hedges, but these are big funds putting on big trades and I try to get in below those levels, okay? So keep that in mind and uh, I hope you guys are, are learning a lot and using this data uh, for good use, all right? Anyways, have a great day. I'll see you guys tomorrow.